Like what does this mean when we have A is congruent to B mod N? And all the following are pretty much equivalent and depending on the situations, you can interpret them differently, okay? So perhaps the first thing I want to tell you guys is that when we have A is congruent to B mod N, this means that A and B have the same remainder and I will put down a quotation mark for the word remainder because sometimes when we're talking about this kind of things you may end up with negative remainders and things like that so that's pretty much the idea that's why I put down a quotation mark A and B have the same remainder when they are divided by n okay and by the way, n shall be a positive whole number greater than 1. So 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Do not ever say n is equal to 1. Mod 1 kills everything. Don't do that. Okay, you are pretty much just killing all the math, killing all the number theory. So don't do that. Okay, so this is the first way to interpret this notation. a and b have the same remainder when we divide a by n, when we divide b by n. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that I can write the following. When we have a is congruent to b mod n, we can say a is equal to. Well, it's just going to be off by a multiple of n. And usually we can just say k times n for some number k, which we don't know yet. Just keep it as how it is for now. And then you add b to it. And you see, when you mod n, this right here states as a. When you have k times n mod n, this is always going to be a multiple n, so it becomes zero in the ma n world, and then you're left with the, the b right here, okay? So, sometimes it may be helpful when you go from here to here, because from here, you're working with an equation rather than a congruence. So that's another way to use this notation, I would say, another way to interpret, another way to approach when you have a congruence. The next thing is that, okay, I can just subtract b on both sides. Right? And if you subtract b on both sides, you can see that a minus b is equal to k times n. In another word, a minus b is a multiple of n, right? So I can actually go from here and tell you guys that n divides into a minus b. And once again, this right here has a few ways to interpret it. Uh, this is actually the common notation that we'll be using quite often. This right here, you say that's device, okay? And when we write this down, this means, uh, let me just put this down in blue, like why not? This means that a minus b is a multiple of n, okay? So that's the idea. So that's pretty much it. Right? I think this is just the, perhaps the most natural way to know what that means. And this right here is pretty useful when you're trying to solve one equation um, from a congruence, right? You change the congruence to an equation first. And then this right here is useful when you're doing some proofs. And perhaps I will just give you guys a quick example, okay? So this is just a quick example. So let's do an uh, easy one, I would say. Let's say we have 10, okay? And that's congruent to... 14 mod 4. Is it? Yes, it is. Why? Because when you have 10 divided by 4, this right here gives you 2 with a remainder 2, right? So this right here is pretty much 2. And then right here, when you do 14 divided by 4, you get 3 with a remainder 2 as well. So they have the same remainder. And once again, sometimes you may be dealing with negative number. And I can also tell you guys that 10 is congruent to negative 2 mod 4, okay? And this is 2 on the left-hand side. This is negative 2. But the truth is that you can just go from negative 2 and you add 4 to it. Negative 2 plus 4, this is also the same as 2 mod 4, okay? So that's the idea. Now the second thing is perhaps slightly trickier because I told you guys we have this, huh? And I want to write this down. Okay, a is my 10 right here based on the order, and this is the first way. The second thing is that I will write 10 is equal to k, I don't know yet, multiplied by 4, and then we add b, which is 14. Well, 10 is equal to, 
4 times 4 plus 14. This is 14, I just need to have negative 1. So that I can get negative 4 <laughs> plus 14, which is 10. So k in this case will be negative 1. k and a and b, they are all integers. And the third way, as I said, n divides into a minus b. So n is 4 divides into a minus b, which is 10 minus 14. In another word, we're saying that 4 divides into negative 4. Why? Because we know negative 4 is equal to 4 times negative 1. This is a multiple, okay? And once again, we are allowing negative numbers like this, right?